all this unprotected sex? I would say no, no, no. We're gonna be no. We're gonna be respectful in this courtroom. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Please don't get on my nerves. You were still with so me, sorry. right? Other than what I just told you right now about having intercourse, I wasn't having unprotected sex with everybody. Wait a minute. Uh, right. Did you just say you have two sisters pregnant in the same family? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. McKee, you right. up here lying. Are you serious? No, me too. Yes, Your Honor. Really wrap your head around the fact that your husband's 49. That already, I mean, yeah. We're... As men age, their sperm count dwindles as well. Not just women. That's true. Hold on to your hats, folks, because you're not going to believe the roller coaster of emotions we just witnessed. Ms. Martinez kicks things off with a bombshell, tearing open the case by spilling the beans on the heartache and familial riff caused by Mr. Hernandez's refusal to acknowledge their duo of offspring, Richard II, the sequel, and Renee, the remix. She's clinging to the hope that DNA results will be the magical glue to piece their fractured relationship back together. But folks, strap in, because we're about to hit a loop-the-loop -loop in this wild ride. Ms. Martinez, you say your family is torn apart since the defense has denied both of your children. Four-year-old Richard II, three-year-old Renee. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You've petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove the truth, that the results will save your relationship. Mr. Hernandez, you say you were suckered into claiming the plaintiff's two children and can't trust anything she's said. Did your jaws hit the floor yet? Just when you thought it couldn't get more telenovela-worthy, Ms. Martinez drops a juicy plot twist by confessing to a spicy, albeit fleeting, rendezvous with Mr. Hernandez's buddy. This bombshell sends shockwaves through the courtroom, and you can practically hear Mr. Hernandez's doubts about being the daddy crescendo into a symphony of skepticism. But hold your popcorn tight, because this emotional roller coaster is just picking up speed. Doing other things like... like it's one incident he's talking about, Your Honor. It was a one-time thing. Me and his friend had it messed around. See? You see the stuff that I'm... Wow. All right, so you stayed honest. with her. Yes. I don't know what I was thinking at the time, but I mean, and it's he been can't so long say that now. because even prior to that, I was always told him I didn't want to be in a relationship. He forced it. He was always like, "Come on, please be with me." You could cut the tension with a knife in a move that could rival any soap opera. Ms. Martinez admits to a risky tryst with another contender in the paternity sweepstakes, casting a shadow of doubt over Mr. Hernandez's role as father numero uno. This confession sends Mr. Hernandez into a whirlwind of doubt and confusion. Buckle up, Buttercup, because the next part is a doozy. I told him about it. He still wanted to be she, with me. She lied about. I did tell him that we protected. did it protected. I did at the time. I mean, why are you having all this unprotected sex? I would say... No, no, no. We're gonna be... No, we're gonna be respectful in this courtroom. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Please don't get on my nerves. You were still with I'm me, so right? Sorry. Other than what I just told you right now about having intercourse, I wasn't having unprotected sex with everybody. Yes, that time I did. It was in the heat of the moment. He didn't have protection. One thing led to another, and it did happen. Just when you thought it couldn't get more convoluted, the plot thickens as Mr. Hernandez's actions come under the microscope. Despite his sea of doubts, he he went ahead and named the offspring after himself, Richard II, the presumed heir to the Hernandez throne, and even scribbled his name on the birth certificates. This move has everyone scratching their heads. Is this a sign of an emotional bond or just wishful thinking on his part? But wait, there's more. The soap opera level just hit overdrive. And I... you signed the birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor. For yeah. both of my kids that he denied. Do you have any evidence that reflects? Yes, I do, this. Your Honor. I'd like to see it. Ron, will you please hand me this paperwork? Yes. This is the birth certificate for Richard Anthony Hernandez II. Yes. Under father's name, Richard. Anthony Hernandez. Well, at the time it was Yarn because I felt like he was mine at the time and I loved them very much and it didn't matter because I loved her that much. Brace yourselves for a curveball. Out of nowhere, a mysterious figure from Ms. Martinez's past, potentially the real life stork for their second munchkin, makes a grand entrance at the hospital right as baby Numero Deuce makes their world debut. This plot twist sends Mr. Hernandez's mind and possibly yours into a tailspin of doubt and suspicion. The drama meter is off the charts, but the next twist, it's gonna floor you. The man that she named after him just all of a a sudden, as soon as he's born, called me and says, hey, I'm, I'm outside. And I was like, whoa, how, how did this man call me right now? I haven't spoke to him in months. Call me. Why would he even be outside? I get down there. I'm talking to him. He wants to come upstairs and, hey, can, can I see your son? Well, you didn't do this with my first son. Why would you want to come over here and see my son? I don't know. It was 8 o'clock in the morning uh, when I'm, son's Once born. again, I'm 8, talking. 8.30. He didn't sign the birth certificate till after his friend left. So once again, if there's all this doubt, why did you sign it again? Prepare to be flabbergasted. In a jaw-dropping, feel-good moment of truth, the court unveils the DNA results. And lo and behold, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Hernandez, you are his father. So you are the legal father, 
In What World Did We Land, the episode kicks off with Ms. Thomas and Mr. McKee in the hot seat, painting a picture of modern love turned courtroom drama. They met online, where most fairy tales start nowadays, right? But when a baby entered the picture, Mr. McKee hit the brakes faster than you can say, swipe left. The courtroom's tension could cut through a block of cheese. Ms. Thomas, you and the defendant, Mr. McKee, met on an online dating website, and the conversation quickly jumped offline and into Mr. McKee's bed. You believed you were in a committed relationship with the defendant and was devastated when he denied your pregnancy. I mean, come on, this is getting juicy. Mr. McKay is adamant he's not the father, eyeing the baby like it's an alien from Mars. The court's atmosphere gets thicker with anticipation, and you can almost hear the collective audience's gasp waiting for the next bomb to drop. And oh, it's about to get as bombastic as a reality TV show season finale. That there is no way you could be the biological father of the plaintiff's son, Carson. You claim once you a look at Miss Thomas's son, you were 100% sure that her baby belonged to another man. Is that correct? Yes, John. All right. You're not ready for this level of soap opera. Ms. Thomas dives into the story of their whirlwind romance that sounds like it was straight out of a cheesy rom-com, minus the happy ending. She thought they were heading for a white picket fence future, but Mr. McKee had left the chat. The plot thickens, folks, and my popcorn is ready. And then I started going to see him maybe like a 45-minute drive from where I live, like every other day. So I'm assuming, like, I'm spending the night, staying the night with him, things like that. And you have, you're having a good time, getting to know time. one yeah. another. Yeah. You all, obviously, since you're spending the night, already started having sex. Yeah, right. And so, what did you like about him? Like, what, what what were you drawn? Kind? He his, was... his looks. He's, he's not a bad-looking person. He looks... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the plot twist we have in store for you. Mr. McKee takes the stage with his side of the story, which sounds like he's reading from the playbook of Commitment Phobes Anonymous. The drama escalates as he spills the tea, and we're here for it, sipping slowly, because this is the kind of tea that scalds. Tell me about it, though. You, you know, a lot of times we're in situations like this where there are two people are on, a, on two different pages. I hear a lot of times when women say, you know, I was committed to him, and then the man will say, well, I wasn't committed to her, or even vice versa. Sometimes, you know, the man is committed and faithful, and the woman did you know Miss Thomas wanted to be in a relationship with you? Not really, Your Honor, but... Did you all ever discuss being in a relationship? No, ma'am. Hold on to your hats. It's about to get wilder. The tale of the pregnancy reveal is straight out of a telenovela, complete with blocked numbers and ghosting. Ms. Thomas's solo pregnancy journey could have its own spin-off show. The audience is on the edge of their seats, and so am I, because who doesn't love a good cliffhanger? So about a month, you would drive to go see him? Like, every other day, I drive. Like, at nighttime, I put my kids to bed. I go see him until it's time for them to go go to school, I wake up and be back home before my kids wake. I didn't do it every day. And so, after this month, Mr. McKee, you're in this casual relationship, she's striving to come see. You don't feel like you're ready to make a commitment. At some point, you find out you're pregnant. And when you find out, you call Mr. McKee and tell him? Yes, ma'am. This roller coaster has more loops than you anticipated. Post birth, the drama doesn't skip a beat. Mr. McKee looks at baby Carson like he's trying to solve a Rubik's Cube, hinting the baby looked like Donald Trump was the cherry on top of this comedic Sunday. The court's atmosphere feels more more like a comedy club at this point. She sent you a text with the picture of the baby. Your first response was what? The baby look like he can be for Donald Trump. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> oh. Really? I didn't expect that one. He thinks the, the color makes a difference. The color don't make a difference. I, I think what you're saying is you thought the baby was biracial? Are we sure this isn't a scripted reality show? The saga continues with Mr. McKay's casual approach to life, seemingly auditioning for the role of most unbothered man in the world. Ms. Thomas, on the other hand, is aiming for sainthood with her patience. The suspense is killing me, but not as much as this comedy gold. But what if he's not mine, y'all? What if he is not? I apologize if he's not but I'm 100% sure. So when is the first time you met Carson? I think he was like a week old. So now when you got there and you saw the baby, talk to me about how you felt. Same way he's feeling now. <laughs> he questioning, like, are you sure? Is it mine? Why is his skin color? That's like when we went and took the blood test, we stopped at a store. She went in the store first. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Just when you think you've seen it all, Mr. McKay drops a bombshell that he could be starting his own reality TV show with not one but two sisters pregnant at the same time. This plot twist needs its own theme music, and I'm thinking something circus-themed. They're uh, both your girlfriend? Like two sisters. Wait a minute. Uh, right. Did you just say you have two sisters pregnant in the same family? Yes, y'all. Mr. McKee, you right. up here lying. Are you serious? You me too. Yes, y'all. Two sisters in the same family, they both having your baby at the same time? Probably a month apart. Wow. Mr. McKee, please tell me you're not gonna end up in this courtroom again. <laughs>
I might be, y'all. The grand finale is upon us, and it's a doozy. The verdict is in, and it's more surprising than finding out your blind date is actually a distant cousin. Has been determined by this court. Mr. McKee, you are not the father. Are you serious? Huh. He is not the father, Miss huh. Thomas. In the blue corner, weighing in with a ton of marital baggage, it's the case of Baker v's Baker folks. The episode jumps right into the deep end with Ms. Baker laying it all on the line, her marriage teetering on the edge of a cliff because of today's DNA result. She's gunning to prove that Caleb, the three-month-old wonder kid, shares DNA with Mr. Baker, who's firmly in the camp of that scientifically impossible buddy due to a vasectomy he had when dinosaurs roamed the earth. If Caleb isn't his, Mr. Baker is hitting the road, leaving drama and possibly diapers in his dust. The anticipation is thick enough to cut with the knife, folks. Ms. Baker, you say the fate of your marriage is riding on today's DNA result. You are suing to prove that your three-month-old son, Caleb, was fathered by your husband, Mr. Baker. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Baker, you say it's medically impossible for you to have a child, and therefore, Caleb cannot be yours. You say if the DNA results prove you are not the father, you will leave your wife and family. Hold on to your hats, because Ms. Baker's about to take us on a wild ride through Boozville. She spills the beans on her night spent painting the town red blacking out and not knowing if she played the field during those lost hours. Mr. Baker's eyebrow is raised so high, it's practically in orbit, wondering if their love was built on shaky ground all along. But wait, there's a twist coming that'll make your head spin. At the time I got pregnant, I um, was drinking quite a bit. I was drinking pretty much every day, and I was blacking out at night, and I wouldn't remember. Er periods of time, I, was, I wouldn't remember. Whether you were intimate with another man or yes, not. Yes, Your Honor. It's not fair to Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker died into their love story, which sounds more like a spicy soap opera plot. They met while he was playing handyman in her house, both of them already hitched to other folks. It's like a country song in the making, y'all. They dance the infidelity tango, causing a whole lot of heartache and stirring up a dust storm of trust issues. But don't grab your tissues just yet. There's more drama ahead than a season finale of your favorite series. Before this, was there a lack of trust in the relationship? Felice and I had gotten together. The way that we got together was I had done some work in her home, and that's the the way that we met. And we didn't do everything right. And I don't condone the actions that we took in our relationship. I was married, she was married. You have two people who are in a monogamous relationship come together the way that we did. There's always going to cast doubt on the back of your mind. Just when you thought it couldn't get crazier, Mr. Baker drops a bombshell. He thought Ms. Baker's baby bump was actually a cancer scare. Yeah, you heard that right. From visions of diapers to nightmares of disease, their emotional roller coaster had more loops than a the plot thickens as they navigate this medical mystery, with the audience clutching their popcorn in suspense. You'll never guess what's coming next. Back in 1991, while she was pregnant, I had a vasectomy. And so based upon the research I have done regarding vasectomies, once the procedure hits the 20-year mark after a vasectomy, you've got to question, is it even possible for me to even conceive a child? Enter Dr. Gator, the medical wizard, ready to drop some knowledge bombs. She talks vasectomies, sperm counts, and the slim chances of Mr. Baker breaking the dad code again. Ms. Baker's clinging to hope like a cat to a curtain, believing in miracles and divine baby-making interventions. Just when you think you've seen it all, the court turns into a biology class with a twist. Brace yourselves. The finale is going to be a doozy. You were in your 40s. Yeah, 45. So, and you know, because of everything and he doubted it, we at least took 20 ultrasounds. We went and had 20 ultrasounds sounds of the 3D, 4D to see what the baby looked like to see if it looked like him. Really wrap your head around the fact that your husband's 49, that already, I mean, yeah, or... as men age, their sperm count dwindles as well. Not just women. That's true. Cue the dramatic music as the DNA results are finally unveiled. Has been determined by this court, Mr. Baker, you are the father. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking things off with a bang, or should I say a soap opera cliffhanger, we're introduced to the world of courtroom dramas with the case of Pitchford Kendricks versus Saavedra. Mr. Pitchford Kendricks struts in, all eager beaver, to claim his title as the father of Ms. Saavedra's two-month-old bundle of joy, Javier. And, as if ordered straight from a daytime TV menu, there's a wild threesome twist involving a cousin. Because, of course, there is. Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you opened your case to prove that you are the biological father of the defendant's two-month-old son, Javier. 
Pierre. You claim she is denying paternity only because she wants to be with another man and needs him to be the father. Grab your popcorn, folks, because Mr. Pitchford Kendricks is about to take us on an emotional roller coaster. He's here to win the Dad of the Year award, sharing his heart-wrenching story about growing up fatherless and his grand plans to break the cycle with Javier. To seal his dad deal, he whips out a gift for the little guy, turning the courtroom into a tearjerker scene. This paternity test is more than just a legal formality. It's his moment to shine. You admit you allowed two men into your bed at the same time, but you are convinced that Mr. Pitchford Kendrick is not Javier's biological father. So, Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you say proving paternity is extremely important to you. I grew up in the streets of Detroit. No dad in my life, and I just want to make sure my son doesn't have to grow up like I did. It's a beautiful basket there. You brought that for your son once you prove your case? Yes, Your Honor. And now for the juicy backstory. It's like peeling an onion, layers of drama and tears. Mrs. Saavedra steps into the spotlight, confirming the threesome but casting doubt over Mr. Pitchford Kendricks's fatherhood credentials. We're treated to a saga of tangled relationships and questionable decisions, including how one steamy night led to this paternity predicament. The plot thickens, folks. It started like this. Me and Greg met each other through he was dating a roommate of mine. And he came over one day. We did end up hitting it off, and we was cool. Ended up having sex. OK, that's Three's Company, right? Y'all too young to know that show. Speaking of Three's Company, when me and the man that I believe is Javier's father, Maurice. Diving into the deep end, the court unpacks their spicy encounters, pondering if Mr. Pitchford Kendricks could indeed be Javier's bio dad. It's like navigating a maze of infidelity, mixed signals, and relationship mishaps. The courtroom feels more like a drama club, analyzing love triangles and emotional baggage. You were dating a woman, you ended up sleeping with her roommate. Then you developed a friendship with that roommate, and then she asked you to introduce her to somebody, mm -hmm. so you introduced her to your cousin. Yes, ma'am. But then... Yes, Your Honor. Her and your cousin invited you into their bed to have a threesome when their relationship needed spicing up. Yeah, like that. Just when you think it's all been said and done, Ms. Saavedra throws another curveball. She's been pregnant, shocker, and there's a paternity question mark hanging over Maurice, Mr. Pitchford Kendricks's cousin. The timeline of events is murkier than a mystery novel, sparking debates and adding fuel to the fire of this family feud. You find out you're pregnant. Yes, ma'am. What do you do then? I contacted Maurice, told him I was pregnant. OK, so you contact the guy that really was your boyfriend? Yes, Your Honor. So when you told him you were pregnant, did he say, it's not my baby, it's Mr. He didn't say anything to the degree at the time. We talked about it later Afterwards, on. Afterwards, he called me trying to act like, man, these old babies over here, dog. I'm telling you, when I see you, dog, it's on, man. You got me over here taking care of your babies, cuz. The emotional temperature soars as everyone braces for the big reveal. Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, ever the optimist, is ready to dive headfirst into fatherhood, despite the twisted soap opera that is his family life. The courtroom turns into a therapy session, dissecting the messy dynamics and the sheer impact of this whole ordeal on their personal identities. It's a roller coaster that nobody signed up for, but everyone's riding. I know he's not the father. I do. And how do you know that, Miss Savidra? Because me and Gregory wasn't messing around in May. I conceived in May. It was April. Right, and I conceived in May. OK, let me go to my exception calculator, because you all just all over the place. So Javier's birthday is January 9th, 2019. Press calculate. Conception window is between April 12th and April 18th. Cue the dramatic music for the grand finale. The paternity results are in. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you are not the father. Oh. 